And a pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to Scottsdale Community College. We're in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona for the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. And alongside Joe Kirsting, the Hall of Fame coach from Glendale Community College, I'm Jeff Lowry. This is MCTV Sports. Two teams here today battling from completely different conferences. The host team is Scottsdale, the Fighting Artichokes, led by their 10-year head coach, Doug Madosky. They come in with a record of 6-4, and four, and they'll be taking on the Raiders of Central Lake out of Brainerd, Minnesota. They are eight and two by way of record coming in. And you talk about this Central Lakes team for just a moment, Joe. This is a team that can hurt you in so many ways. Not only do they have one of the top defenses at the national level, but this is an offense that is putting up some truly stellar numbers here in 2015. Now, these are numbers I've never seen before, mm -hmm. Jeff. I've been around junior college football since about 1980. And uh, a team that's averaging 57 points a game, only giving up 17 points a game. They got a tremendous passing game, but just as effective running game. So uh, Scottsdale's got their work cut out. Now, the, the strength of Scottsdale's team this year has been their defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, between Scottsdale's running game and defense, they need to try to control that uh, Central Lakes football team. Well, Central Lakes uh, lost only twice this year, but the two teams that they lost to, uh, one being a team vying for a national championship later today, Rochester, they'll be playing East Mississippi, and the other team was ranked 13th. So those are some, I guess what you would call, and coaches, and I am certainly know that you don't like this term, but those are quality losses. Yeah, we don't like those losses at all, that's right. for sure. But uh, when you look at those those games, the thing you got to think about is the total strength of schedule. Mm -hmm. I got to believe that Scottsdale plays a tougher schedule from top to bottom. This year's WSFL, the Western States Football League, was really balanced. There wasn't mm -hmm. a whole lot of dominant teams. You know, any team could knock any other team off. And so they end up with a 6-4 and four record, which is disappointing for Coach Mendoski and the Artichokes. But, uh, you know, they played some really tough opponents. Uh, Central Lakes played two great teams and, mm -hmm. and several teams that are probably pretty average as compared to Western State Football League competition. Now the Raiders are led by one of the top quarterbacks in the nation and Jake Faber. He threw for nearly 2,800 yards, uh, completed nearly 68 percent of his passes, and he features really one of the best wide receivers in the country in Kyron Johnson. Well, Kyron Johnson, every one out of three times he touches the ball, he scores a touchdown. That's amazing. Phenomenal. Yeah. He's caught the ball 64 times, 22 touchdowns. So. One of the things I'm going to be looking for, Scottsdale's great secondary was Chavosky, Collins, and uh, Tell Vince Way, the two corners. Mm -hmm. How are they going to play Johnson? Are they going to man him up? Are they going to play single coverage? Are they going to try to roll and double cover him at times? So that's going to be an interesting matchup. And if they do try to double cover him, that'll give up some things in the run game. So. It's a real challenge for Coach Mendoski's defense today. Now, Scottsdale, a team that has been to this game three years in a row. They've won. Uh, they won two years ago in a 50 to 42 win over Dodge City. Last year, they came out on the short end by a touchdown. Uh, and what we've seen out of Scottsdale over the last couple of years is a high-flying, high-powered passing offense. This year, that was not the case. Their top offensive player is Armand Wayway, over a thousand yards rushing. But this is not the vaunted passing game that Doug Madoski's had over the last three or four years. Well, their quarterback, Tyler Brugman, has dealt with injuries throughout the year. He missed two full games. Uh, we think he's back and healthy 100 percent today, mm -hmm. and they've had some time since the end of the season to try to, you know, work out the, the uh, difficulties in the pass game. But for sure, Wayway's the key guy for them mm -hmm. today, and their other running backs. They have uh, three really talented backs, but Wayway is a big physical back. He's probably not as big as I think he is, but he runs big. He runs as a very physical player, yeah. averages over seven yards per carry. So, uh, and they've got an excellent offensive line. So mm -hmm. I look for them to try to control clock, which is totally different than what they've done in the past, but try to control the ball, control the clock, keep it away from that vaunted uh, Raiders offense and, and see if they can run some time off and score points. Well, a third party of our crew here is Ashley Neville, and she had a chance to talk to both head coaches here at Scottsdale Community College. 
Thanks, Jeff. As the Scottsdale Community College Artichokes head into their third consecutive Valley of the Sun Bowl, I caught up with head coach Doug Madoski and to see what his team is doing to prepare for Central Lakes College. I think we're just going to do what we do. Um, I think at the end of the day, that you know, we, we've gotten here because we've been able to play pretty well on, on, on all phases of the game at different times. We've just done it in spurts. And I think the biggest challenge for us is going to be to, to be able to put it together with a long layoff and to, and to be able to continue to excel regardless of the fact that there's been three or four weeks since we last played. For Central Lakes College coach Greg Medic, he's got a pretty good idea of what the artichokes want to do too, and he explains what his team must do to come out on top. We're going to have to be healthy throughout the course of the game. Uh, we might have to get a break here or there. We're going to have to sustain some drives and be able to uh, to really eliminate the big play probably. We'll have to try to contain their explosive offense, and, and hopefully we'll outscore them at the end. So the question remains, will Central Lakes College contain the Scottsdale offense in the Valley of the Sun Bowl? Back to you, Jeff. All right, Ashley, thank you very much. Coach, let's talk about uh, these two defenses, both uh, very solid, especially Scottsdale up front. They're led by Maurice Burton, who had uh, very lofty numbers this year, 15 sacks, 24 tackles for loss, and one of the best middle linebackers in the Western States Football League in Brian Keyes. Well, that's where it all starts in, in the game of football is in the at the line of scrimmage. And if those two guys, along with their their other vaunted defensive front, you know, Scottsdale's front this year is, is one of the best I've seen in the Western States Football League, led by Burton and Keyes. Keyes a big physical linebacker, mm -hmm. over 240 pounds, but he covers sideline to sideline. He's just as good against the pass as he is against the run. So those are going to be two of the key guys to try to stop this Raiders offense. And then talking about the Raiders defense, uh, Sean Walker, 14 sacks, 20 tackle for losses, big numbers. Uh, he's first on the team in tackles, and uh, he's going to have his work cut out for him today, especially with that Scottsdale running game. Well, he's six foot six. He's about 220 pounds, so he's kind of thinly built for a defensive lineman, mm -hmm. but very athletic guy. Uh, really disruptive in the backfield, and obviously with those sack numbers, uh, he, he's got great wingspan, so he can get, he's got that reach to make tackles and, and strip quarterbacks. He's going to be a very important player for their defense today. Okay, so we have the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes in their third consecutive Valley of the Sun Bowl. They are one in three all time in Valley of the Sun Bowl appearances. And for Central Lakes, this is a team that has made the top 20 in each of Greg Medic's nine seasons, and they have made it in a bowl game five of the last seven years. We think it's going to be a great game. We invite you to come back for all the exciting play-by-play -play action. It's the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. It's Scottsdale and Central Lakes. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where the ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. And welcome back to Scottsdale in the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Central Lakes Raiders coming out of the Minnesota College Athletic Conference, 8-2 and two under their head coach, Greg Medic. Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes led by their 10th year head coach, Doug Madoski. They are 6-4 and four coming in. Uh, the Fighting Artichokes have been in this game the last two seasons. Uh, they've split the last two years, and they're hoping to uh, come back with a win here. But since uh, our pregame, we've learned of a few players that will not be in the game, including their uh, all-conference cornerback, Chavosky Collins. Yeah, that's a big loss for Scottsdale, obviously with the great passing attack that uh, Central Lakes brings into this game. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle the uh, great receiver, Kyron Johnson, in today's game. All right, the third member of our party is Ashley Neville, and she's sidelined. Ashley. While the Raiders have a highly explosive offense with their quarterback ranking third in the nation in touchdowns, their running back ranking fourth in the nation in rushing touchdowns, and their receiver ranking first in the nation in receiving touchdowns, the Artichokes have one of the highest defensive units in the conference, ranking sixth in the nation in interceptions. Both teams have talent on both ends of the ball, so it's pretty evenly matched up. But who wins this game is all about execution and both teams sticking to what they do best. We're ready to go and the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl is underway. Rhodes will field from his own four yard line as he brings it up to the 20 and he's upended near the 23. An outstanding job on special teams by Scottsdale. And this game is underway. That was DJ Olmstead on the uh, tackle for Scottsdale. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see what Scottsdale comes out in. In their last game that I witnessed against Glendale, they played a four-man front with two linebackers and five defensive backs. Uh, looks like right now, can't tell just yet, but they got four down linemen. And again, it looks like two linebackers set, so they're playing with a nickel look uh, to start the game off. Jake Faber, right-handed throwing quarterback, the sophomore, 6'4", 210 pounds. He was an honorable mention All-American a year ago in this past season. He threw for nearly 2,800 yards, 37 touchdowns, Dwayne and Dave. 12 interceptions. Offense. Number 10, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's an inauspicious way to start a game, Jeff, with a delay of the game before you even start. They, they uh, wanted to change the play. They looked over to the coach to get a new signal, and by the time they got the signal, the 25-second clock had run out. So instead of first and 10, they'll start first and 15 back at their own 18-yard line, and their second mistake is a high snap, and they made them pay for it. The ball squirts loose, and a huge break for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichoke as they recover the ball at the Central Lakes 11-yard line. And there was Maurice Burton that knocked the quarterback off the ball and recovered that, that fumble, fumbled snap, and a high snap to start the game. Kind of reminds you of a Super Bowl a, a couple of years ago when Denver uh, snapped it over Peyton Manning's head to start that game against uh, the Seahawks. Uh, hopefully that won't be the same kind of game because that was a, not much of a contest. That wasn't much fun. All right, so Doug Madoski's offense will start at the 10-yard line of the Raiders, and it is first and goal. And the quarterback is Tyler Brugman out of Brophy College Prep here in Phoenix, and he'll come out on a quick post pattern, and the pass is incomplete. That ball looked like it was right on target, but it was broken up maybe there at the last instant by one of the cornerbacks, uh, Kyrie Rhodes. Well, that was a heck of a throw by Brugman. He had very little room to squeeze that ball into, and that was Dion Martinez that was not able to hold on to that bullet. So it brings up a second down and goal. We will remind you that Jovan Wilson, uh, one of the tight ends, will not start, and Bubba Fitzgerald will be getting a lot of play there. And we got our second penalty of the contest, and this most likely a false start. False start. Offense, number 65, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Well, both teams look a little tight going into this game with penalties early on and a turnover early on. But let's see which team settled down more, more quickly to able to uh, maintain their offensive continuity. So it's second down and goal from the 15-yard line. You're looking at Tyler Brugman, who had missed two games, both games in which Scottsdale lost. And here's a quick screen to the far side of the field, slipping tackles near the 13 and out of bounds as he's driven out of bounds on the far side. A nice setup play there for Hiram Velez, their second leading receiver on the team. That's his 28th catch of the year. Well, Jeff, that's one of those plays where the quarterback has the option either to hand the ball to the back or throw it out to his wide receiver. He had a man advantage with that trips formation, and so he threw it to his wide receiver on the screen, and a great job by Velez getting down to the five-yard line. So it's going to bring up third down and goal at the five. Brugman takes the direct snap, lofts up a timing pattern over to the far side in the corner of the end zone, incomplete. And Rhodes being picked on for a second time at cornerback as the pass was intended to their leading receiver this year, Shaq Curenton. Well, I don't know if Coach Madoski realizes it, but it is fourth down and he's keeping his offense out on the field. I would surely take the points right here, Jeff Lowry. Eric Lopez, their kicker this year, has struggled. He is 5 of 11, even though his longest field goal is from 42 yards out. So, as Coach said, it's fourth down and goal to go from just outside the five of Central Lakes. No score. First possession of the game for Scottsdale. They come out throwing and coming off the bench and getting the start in this first opening series is the tight end, Thayer Blakes, from six yards out, and Scottsdale leads it six to nothing. Well, Scottsdale came out and an well, they shifted to an empty backfield set. The corner went out and covered the running back who was split out wide outside the tight end. Nobody covered the tight end, Jeff, and there were man coverage and he's wide open in the end zone. 
great uh, design there by Coach Tommy Ziegler, the offensive coordinator. So Eric Lopez in for the extra point. Snap is down. The kick rifled through the uprights. It is good, and it's 7 to nothing with 14-13 left to go. And it all resulted in the fumble as we will have our first break, the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. And I won't have to tell my kids, this isn't a drill. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always lock it up. All right, welcome back to Scottsdale Community College, the 35th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Central Lakes, two snaps of the ball, a fumble. After a high snap to the quarterback, and Faber never had a handle on it. And Scottsdale recovered at the 10-yard line, but it took them four plays. They scored the first touchdown of this Valley of the Sun Bowl by Blakes. Now Rhodes, from inside his own five-yard line, took on a defender near the 22, and then Lunges ahead, a 20-yard return. The tackle made there by the, uh, look like the number six on special teams, and that's Zach Olegi. So it'll be first down and 10 here for Scottsdale, or for the uh, Central Lakes team out of Brainerd, Minnesota. And this is a team that comes in here with a record of eight wins and two losses. They were in this game five years ago took on the Glendale Gauchos over at uh, Hanhila Stadium. Glendale came out on top 23 to 13. They trail seven to nothing here and the handoff goes to Jam and Jam is up across the 30 yard line to pick up a close to six yards for their leading running back this year, leading rusher Carlton Jam, who spells it D-J-A-M, 1,016 yards this year, averages 5.7 carries, uh, yards per carry, and 18 touchdowns. Second down, Jam gets the call again. He'll get the first down, still on his feet, up across the 45, and wrapped up defensively from behind by the leading tackler for the Artichokes, Brian Keyes. Well, both of those plays, they used what we call a down scheme or gap scheme and blocked everybody down. They pulled the backside guard, and on that second play, the fullback led as well and a great job by the offensive line for Central Lakes of, clean, of, of knocking the defensive line down inside and getting that play around the corner. So from the 46, out of the shotgun, Faber hands off, and again, Jam getting the carry, his third straight carry, and another great defensive play by Brian Keyes, the middle linebacker, as I mentioned, coming in, number one in tackles this year. He has 12 tackles for loss. Well, that's going to be one of the keys for this game, literally. Keys, keys. making lots of plays. The defensive line has got to keep the li offensive lineman off of him so he can move up and down the line of scrimmage and hit those running backs in the hole. It was a one-yard pickup for Central Lakes, and now brings up second down and nine. Seven to nothing, Scottsdale here in the first. To the air is Faber, now steps up into the pocket, has some running room, dives to the line to gain, but he's gonna be about a yard shy. A gain of eight for the quarterback, who also rushed for five touchdowns this year, and he was a honorable mention All-American a season ago, but this year, he didn't make that list, but there were some awfully good quarterbacks in the nation last uh, this past season. Well, he's got phenomenal numbers, and he uh, is more of a passing threat than a running threat. They don't really design runs for him specifically, but he did a nice job scrambling and picking up nearly a first down. Big third and one. First time they've been inside Scottsdale territory, 12 minutes on the clock. Here's the handoff, running right, trying to get to the edge. He'll dive in to the 43-yard line, and he'll pick up the first down, Olmstead making the tackle on that play and move the chains for Central Lakes. Well, the defensive front for Scottsdale has got to do a better job against that down blocking scheme. They keep trying to come straight up the field instead of adjusting to the, the pressure of the block from the man outside of them. They've got to fight pressure and get in better pursuit to the ball because they've had very poor pursuit on all three of those down blocking schemes. Trey Blanchard being featured in the backfield here behind the quarterback and Graber to the air and he'll throw it over the far side and a nice job of reaching up and making a touchdown catch. Only the 23rd of the year for Karen Johnson and it's a one point game on a 43 yard touchdown pass. 
Well, Johnson is the main man for this offensive team. He is outstanding. He just ran a simple post route. There was no deep safety down the middle. They were playing straight man coverage, and he beat the corner handily and a perfect throw by Faber for the touchdown. And that happened rather quickly, Jeff. They made it look easy. As Zeth Zins is in, 6-4-2-11 on the extra point, and it's a bad snap, and now the holder is in trouble, and down he goes. So Scottsdale coming through. And we got a flag on the near sideline. I, I, I kind of think Scottsdale might have been in the neutral zone on the snap of the ball, but we'll see what the call is here. Offsides, defense, number four. Half the distance to the goal, replay the try. Jonathan Noli, our head official, Brian Hastings, Tyler Saramelli, Jacob Gustafson, Aaron Hockley, Brad Broyles, and Paul Verna, the officiating crew for this 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. So Scottsdale, another bad snap. That is the third bad snap. And in junior college, you can return this, can't you? If it goes into the end zone, you cannot. You cannot. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh... A, a blocked kick that picked up, I know behind the line of scrimmage, you can definitely advance, and it's two points if they can bring it all the way back to the other end of the field into the end zone. We saw that in a Valley of the Sun Bowl about, oh, maybe seven or eight years ago. So 11:27 left to play here as these two teams are trying to get acquainted with one another. And uh, when we come back, we'll have the kickoff to Scottsdale. It's 7-6, Fighting Archer. As a parent, I think it's tragic that one in five children struggles with hunger right here in America. But there is hope. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're feeding America. All right, Zen's getting set to kick off here for Central Lakes, 7-6. The artichokes in the all-white, green trim. Central Lakes out of Brainerd, Minnesota in the all-red with the white trim, short kick. It's going to be fielded back at the Fighting Artichokes 17-yard line. Here's Monahan trying to change his field of direction, and that one really backfired on him. He gets absolutely nowhere, and well, pretty good coverage. Late flags flying in here is Kieran Johnson, the outstanding wide receiver who just scored a 43-yard touchdown pass from his quarterback, Jake Faber, to put Central Lakes right back into this ball game. Is in on the tackle on special teams. I thought I saw a flag come flying in. It looks like there's also an injured player for the Raiders. So with the timeout, we'll take one, two, seven, six artichokes. They'll have the ball right around the 20 yard line when we come back. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Seven to six is our score. Scottsdale with the ball, and we had a late hit on the kick return. We had an injured player now getting off the field. That's Andrew Wallach for Central Lakes under his own power, and now Scottsdale will be backed up all the way to their own 10-yard line. Both teams have scored. Scottsdale scored after recovering a fumble at the Central Lakes 10-yard line and marching in on a, on a pass play to Blakes and now going for a home run ball over the middle to Curenton at midfield, and it's incomplete. Good coverage, Coach, by Tykeese Johnson. Yeah, Johnson was in step for step with Curenton, and Curenton is the key uh, receiving threat for Scottsdale, but... Uh, Johnson will have nothing to do with that. So I'll bring up second down and 10. Scottsdale's been in this Valley of the Sun Bowl the last two years, winning in 2013 in a gun. That was a, a battle there, uh, 50 to 42 with Dodge City. 
Here's a throw to the far side. It's high. Brugman felt the pressure coming in and had to unload quickly before Jalen Penn dropped him to the ground. Yeah, Penn really got in there quickly, as you said, Jeff, and uh, it looked like they were trying to set up a screen to the wide receiver, but uh, it was good coverage out on the flank, and uh, Brugman just had to throw that ball away. Now it's going to bring up a third and 10 from their own 10-yard line. Brugman, who played his high school quarterbacking at Brophy College Prep in downtown Phoenix. D1 prospect, has time, plenty of time, and he rifles one into double team coverage. Fortunately, he threw a sinking knuckleball, or that ball might have been picked off as he was trying to hook up with Blakes, who he had the first touchdown of the game connection to back early in the quarter. Well, they brought five on the rush there, and they picked it, Scottsdale picked that up very well, but the coverage was excellent for the Raiders, and uh, there really wasn't anybody available for Brugman to hit. And that's gonna create great field position as long as they field this punt uh, well for the Raiders of Central Lakes. So Rhodes and Rowell are back. Rhodes 14, who has returned the first two kickoffs. Hiram Velez averaging just under 39 yards a kick with the line of scrimmage right at the 10 yard line. This will be at least a 40 yard punt. It's gonna roll inside the 45 and all the way down to the opponents 41 yard line. So a 49 yard punt, no return. You can't ask for more than that. With 1045, first quarter action, it's the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MC TV Sports. If you want to see the other side of the earth, then travel with 180 View here on MCTV. Tune in and take a journey from Arizona to the Ukraine. Compare lifestyles, architecture, the land, and traditions when we look at each culture and learn about our differences. 180 View is seen on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For airtimes, go to maricopa.edu slash MCTV. On the left side, and now finally brought down near the 44-yard line. Good pursuit on the outside by this Scottsdale defense. He'll bring up a second and seven. Well, Scottsdale's got to limit those big plays. Defensively, I think they're so solid in the front that they should be able to hang pretty tough in the run game. But you give up those big plays like they did earlier to Johnson, and uh, those things don't come off the board once you put them in the end zone. So it brings up second down and seven. Johnson, the leading receiver in terms of touchdown receptions this year in the nation, but he's not going to get the call here. This is Arlington, and Arlington is going to make the catch at the 45, and then he was met immediately, and that time they rise to the occasion defensively, led by Curtis Taylor. A good pursuit that time by Scott Stales. Now it's going to bring up a key third and four near midfield, and we'll see what kind of offensive approach you get from the Raiders because uh, if they end up third or fourth and short, they still could go forward with a four down situation. Looks like they have a little bit of confusion. Now they're finally breaking the huddle. You don't see huddles very often anymore. So much hurry up offense now in the game to keep that defense off the mark. And the handoff goes up the middle, and that's going to net them a first down. Nice run that time by their leading rusher, Carlton. Uh, spells it D-J-A-M, but it's pronounced Carlton Jam. 1,016 yards this year with 18 rushing touchdowns. Well, they rotate two backs in there. Jam's the bigger back. He's 214 pounds. And then Blanchard, Trey Blanchard, wears number four. He's 190 pounds. They're both outstanding running backs. Both have made all conference, so you can tell what kind of talent they have. And they got Johnson and Arlington slot left. Actually, Johnson's spread out wide to the top of your television screen. And they feature on the near side, Bo Wilhelm, who had 35 receptions. Coach, you look up and down the receivers. I mean, Johnson, 64 catches. Wilhelm, 35. They got so many players as this one's nearly intercepted in the flats. And that was Craig Kanganhara. Well, nice job by Kanganhara. They Kang Young Guerrara. I think uh, I left a syllable yeah, out there. Yeah, he, he, that's a tough one to say. Uh, they, they showed a four-man rush, and then he bailed out on it and uh, got underneath that route and nearly made a great interception. That would have been the second turnover of the day for the Central Lakes team. 
And we're not even halfway through quarter number one, 8.30 on the clock. Here's the handoff, running left, and this is Blanchard, and Blanchard battles his way down close to the 37 before he is tripped up by the leading tackler for the Artichokes this year in Brian Keyes. And Scottsdale will mix a three-man front and a four-man front. They went to the three-man front that last play. I think they're gonna stay in the three-man front again on this play. And usually when they do this, I like to bring some pressure. So look for some blitzing linebackers against this four wide receiver set. Blanchard and a penalty marker is down. Somebody must have jumped a little quick there on the red side of the field. Ball start. Offense, number eight, five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, I was gonna blame one of those offensive linemen trying to get to a quick move to stop the, the blitzing linebacker, but it's on the wide receiver who moved early, number eight, Bo Wilhelm. Let's give you the offensive line, uh, Magania, the, the center. The right side led by Pendergraf and Giesman. The left side, Zierden and Brisk for Central Lakes in the all red uniforms with the white trim. Bit of a uh, culture shock coming from Minnesota to sunny Arizona. Our game time temperature 70 degrees here in Scottsdale Community College. And they get four yards back on the play. And Brian Keyes, very active, the middle linebacker for Scottsdale's defense. Yeah, there's a wide receiver screen to the great wide out Johnson. And uh, Keyes read it right away, hit it for about a three, four yard gain. And that's gonna bring up a punting situation. And Scottsdale better hurry up and get off the field because they're out ready to go. So Mapes, another bad snap. They run into the punter and may have blocked it and that ball goes out of bounds near midfield. Good pressure by the Scottsdale defense led by John Parker, but the Central Lakes team's got to shore up their snapping uh, abilities or it's gonna be a long afternoon for the team out of Minnesota. Or else they're not gonna punt or, or kick extra points well, anymore. Well, the punter, he you know, I did that one time runner. in a Valley of the Bowl. I said, we got so many kicks blocked on, on extra points and field goals, we just quit lining up for them. We just went for two. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of coaches do that. Of course, uh, Coach Kirsting, longtime head coach at Glendale Community College. You, you've won 11 of these Valley of the Sun Bowl games. Yeah, that was fun. So Scottsdale comes out, and our first look at their leading rusher, Armand Weiwei as he takes it over center. And he's gonna be wrapped up there defensively by Makai Riley. And Weiwei lost his helmet on that play. In college football, he'll have to come off the field for one play at least uh, and make sure that helmet's fitting correctly before he goes back in. So they start this drive from their own 49 yard line after the block punt. And now they run that counter play, and this is Monahan and Monahan inside the 40 and down close to the 34-yard line. And that was a great vertical cut by Monahan. He was running the, uh, more of a sweet path initially, planted his left foot in the ground and went north and south. And great job by Monahan picking up that first down. Good job by the O-line, led by Sellers and Ross and Johnson and Neal and Bergen. So a first down and 10. Scottsdale with a one point lead with 6.30 on the clock and they go back to the ground and back between the guards. They run it and a gain of close to four yards on the play. And they've been in their uh, 11 personnel most of the game so far, but they take uh, Fitzgerald out of the game and go to now, well, actually, they're still 11 personnel. They've got Blakes in at the Y position, the tight end position now. 11 personnel meaning one back and one tight end and three wide receivers. Well, how important is Austin Ross, the center of the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes here today? He's the veteran out of Skyline, 302 pound center and a counter play and Weiwei is down to the 25. Well, Weiwei hit it in there pretty good that time and was just ending up about one yard short of that first down. They bring the bigger tight end Fitzgerald back into the game. That usually means run when number 47's in the game with Weiwei at the tailback. So now Scottsdale looking at a third and two. The line to gain is the 24 of Central Lake. Scottsdale with the ball and the lead seven to six first quarter action. Quarterback, he will hand off, and the Central Lakes defense rising to the occasion 
Colton Pollock, a 330 pounder out of Big Lake, Minnesota. Yeah, he was in there as well as Maurice Willis. And you were thinking four down territory in that situation. And it looks like it is going to be four down territory. But you sure don't want to lose two yards on third and two. You'd think you'd get it to at least third, fourth and one or first down. So now it's going to bring up a fourth and four. And they're in there. The shift again to that empty set. Let's see who covers the tight end this time. And Monahan's caught a few balls this year. He's over 500 yards from scrimmage. Brogman flushed out of the pocket running, nearly lost his balance. And then he is going to be wrapped up near the 26 yard line. I don't know, did he? That's Penn on the tackle. He's going to be well short of a line to gain, so it'll be a turnover on downs. Well, early pressure forced uh, Brugman to roll to his left. If he didn't have that pressure, he had his favorite receiver, Curitan, wide open on a drag route to the right. But unfortunately for Scottsdale, he had to scramble left, and there was no receiver in his vicinity to throw the ball, and he's going to end up short. So Central Lakes will have it from their own 25-yard line. As they trail seven to six here in quarter number one, you're watching the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. And back out there, the young man, the sophomore quarterback, as he hands off the jam straight ahead, only two yards on the play. And a sensational job up the middle and plugging the holes, Angel Silva, the 206 pound linebacker out of St. Mary's. Well, they're really favoring the running game so far to start this game, Central Lakes. And uh, they're using a huddle. Uh, right now, it's a quick huddle. They only go about four yards away from the ball. So we'll see how much they mix in the pass with this run action. Jackson Winter now featured in the backfield and he is the up back lead blocking for Jam to the left side as he dives towards that 35 yard line. He's a little shy on the far side as he's brought down by Olmstead, one of the top tacklers on this fighting artichoke defense out of Desert Mountain. Now they've moved it back to about the 33 yard line. Yeah, Looks like one of the players lost his helmet. So one of the linemen, offensive linemen is coming off the field for Scottsdale. And, uh, and we got a flag that I did not see that flag thrown. So I'm not sure I see where it stands right now, but. Personal foul, defense number 94. His helmet came off during the play and continued to participate. Mm. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, and that's a rule for safety, Jeff, that uh, once your helmet comes off, you need to just stop playing. You, you go to a knee and you stop playing so that you won't incur a head injury. Sure. Uh, so, but that, that goes totally against the natural instinct of a football player. Absolutely. You know, you're on the field, your job is to get to the ball, make a tackle. So that's a really tough, tough penalty for the artichokes. Seven to six artichokes with three minutes and 30 seconds. Clock winding down here, first quarter action. And now Faber has an open man on the far side of the field and he is racing into the end zone. 52 yards for Bo Wilhelm. For Wilhelm, his fourth touchdown catch of the year. And for the first time in this 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl, visiting Central Lakes has the lead. Well, yeah, Wilhelm just ran a straight go route from his slot position. The safety was there to pick him up in man-to-man -man coverage. Once It was against what we call quarters coverage, and the safety, once that uh, number two receiver goes vertical, he has to pick him up man-to-man, -man, and that was number 23 in coverage, John Parker, and he ran right past Parker for the score. And the extra point is good to make it 13 to seven in favor of visiting Central Lakes Raiders. We'll take a timeout. This is the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal. Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. Well, for the first time in this Valley of the Sun Bowl, visiting Central Lakes has the lead, and it's 13-7. They're getting set to kick things off here. 
Monahan back deep, standing at his own 13-yard line. Zins with the kick. He's one of their offensive linemen. And one of the up men is going to take this return, and it's Martinez, one of the wide receivers down on the depth chart, and a return of 14 yards upfield. Excellent coverage there by Minga and Wallach, or rather check that, Moreland was in the area for Minnesota. You know, Jeff, you made a really good comment uh, during the break there. He's getting a lot of time Outside. to throw the ball. <laughs> Faber, Number two, and he's a five yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. And Faber, the quarterback, is such an accurate passer, but when you get that kind of time, it's a lot easier to be accurate. And so Scottsdale has got to crank up the pass rush, but it's difficult because they're running, Central Lakes is running the ball quite often, and it's difficult to get in a pass rush mode when they're coming at you in the run game. Well, we talked about this team uh, at, at the outset of the broadcast, 538 yards per game. 307 through the air and 225 on the ground. They are certainly not one dimensional. So now Brugman coming out, throwing long and deep to the far side. Curitan climbs the ladder and makes the catch and runs out of bounds at the Central Lakes 30 yard line. That is a 33 yard pass play. First down, Scottsdale fighting artichokes. Well, nice job by Curitan, high pointing that ball. The ball was underthrown a little bit. If he'd have put it out there, Brugman put it out there a little further, could have been six points for the artichokes. So Scottsdale will have a first down and 10 from the opponent's 30 yard line. What an outstanding catch by Curitan. He is the leading receiver this year. 43 catches coming in. Nearly 600 yards and 11 receiving touchdowns. To the air, Brugman throws, complete to the far side. Just a quick out pattern to Hiram Velez. Yeah, Velez was lined up in the slot. They ran the slant route with Curitan, who was in the number one position. Uh, Velez was in the slot, ran the quick out, a nice easy throw and catch, five yard gain. We like that as offensive coordinators. You make it a second, uh, it's only about a four yard gain actually, second and six. Cameron Burgeon at right guard leading the charge out of Tempe Prep here in Arizona, here in the Phoenix area. Second down and six. And the snap with Brugman not even looking, he still was able to corral it. He completes the pass to Curitan on the far side. He slipped the tackle near the 24 and will pick up the first down. He is pushed out of bounds near the 11 yard line and that is going to be close to a 14 yard pickup. And that was a very fortunate play for the Artichokes because Brugman was yeah. not ready for the snap. The center snapped it too soon, uh, but Brugman kept his composure. He went to his favorite receiver. Curitan saw what was going on, just showed his numbers and was able to catch the ball. Actually, that was only a seven yard pickup. Here's a run to the left side. And this is Hiram Velez. And a nice uh, little razzle-dazzle there for the offense, a play we haven't seen yet in this game. And, well, he picks up a good seven. That's just a fly motion sweep action, but they, but they use a little forward pitch to get the ball to the uh, motion man. And Velez has some quickness, as you can see. He picked up a nice seven yards. And he's known more for his uh, receiving talents than coming out of the backfield. Now way, way. Wayway taking on defenders, dragging them down to the seven yard line, and that's enough for the first down tackle by uh, Michael Riley. Well, that's what Wayway's known for right there, Jeff. Very rarely does the first tackler bring him down. He gets second and third yardage, yardage after first contact, and uh, he did a great job there picking up that first down and setting them up first and goal at the seven. One minute, clock continues to wind down here. First quarter action, Scottsdale trying to regain the lead. They led it by a 7-6 mark, Brugman to the air, corner of the end zone, line drive. Pass is caught, it went right through the coverage's hands, and that's Curitan as he scores his 12th touchdown of the season from seven yards out from Tyler Brugman, his 16th touchdown pass of the year, and it's a 13-13 tie, under a minute left to go. Well, Cooper was in man coverage there on Curitan, and like you said, he was in position to make the play, and the ball went right, looked like it went right, right between through. his hands, and uh, Curitan got his mitts on it and 
touchdown. <laughs> so a 13-13 tie. Let's see what special teams can do here. And Lopez's kick is good. 45 seconds left to play here. Quarter number one, Scottsdale 14, visiting Central Lakes 13. This is the 35th annual Valley of the Sun. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Eric Lopez for Scottsdale, getting set to tee this one off. Back to receive, number five, Cody Rowell, and number 14, Kyrie Rhodes. And Rhodes will return his third kick, this time from his own six-yard line. Now, check that. That's Arlington. Arlington slid in there and returns it up to the 35-yard line, a 29-yard return for one of their uh, top receivers, Elias Arlington. Well, Jeff, we were wondering when this game started uh, how the defense for Scottsdale would match up against this explosive offense for uh, Central Lakes, and so far, not so good. Both teams have scored twice already in the first quarter. We got a 14-13 score, and uh, it could be one of those games where last team with the ball wins. So they'll start from their own 35-yard line, Central Lakes, trailing 14-13, 37 seconds left to go here, and they muff it up, and... Fortunately for the Central Lakes team, Trey Blanchard, who actually misplayed the little toss pitch there, uh, was able to cover it up. And I think they actually got the ball back to the line of scrimmage, but second and 10. Well, the timing was off a little bit on that play. It looked like he was supposed to hand the ball, as you can see right there, to Blanchard. And uh, The ruling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Okay. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men in formation. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, I guess that's what you call going from rags to riches or riches <laughs> to rags. Absolutely, especially if they would have lost that ball. My goodness. That's pretty unusual to start a first play of a series with 12 guys on the field. Scottsdale's in a, in a um, five defensive back formation against his trips. And they run a bit of a counter here and that didn't fool anybody on that Scottsdale defense. Led by Telvin's way. And now you got extracurricular activity, late flag coming in. And the tempers are starting to Play. flare already. Personal foul, defense number wow. 96. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, well they said Burton kept playing after the whistle and it looked like he did to me as well. The ball carrier was down, the ball was out and he kept driving him into the ground and uh, that's a personal foul. And you gotta stop when that ball carrier is on the ground. Well, we were talking about, I guess the lack of defense here in this first quarter as we, that was probably the final play of quarter number one. If you're wondering the highest scoring Valley of the Sun Bowl was your final season, no, your second to last season in a national championship game, 98 points between Glendale and Grand Rapids, and Coach Kirsting, your team won it 50 to 48. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score. The home team, Scottsdale 14, the visiting Central Lakes Raiders 13. The second quarter is coming up next on MC TV Sports. Enfoque en tu futuro connects you with the diverse people and events that make up the Maricopa Community Colleges. Share in the success of our students. Celebrate the people who make a difference. Enfoque en tu futuro is about the people, places, and events that have an impact on the Maricopa Colleges. Tune into Enfoque en tu futuro only on MCTV Cox Cable 115. For times, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. All right, second quarter getting set to start here. First down and 10 for the Raiders out of Minnesota, the Central Lakes Raiders. 
who trail 14 to 13 as we start quarter number two. Alongside Joe Kirsting, our sideline reporter, Ashley Neville, I'm Jeff Lowry. To the air goes the quarterback, and he throws, and it was in and off the hands of Brian Keyes, the outstanding middle linebacker, and nearly coming up with the second turnover of the contest. Well, that's an unusual decision there by Jake Faber. Uh, nobody open, and he threw the ball right down the middle, and the middle linebacker, Keyes, nearly came up with the big interception. He had his running back wide open on a swing route to his right, but he tried to force that ball in the middle. Second down and 10. The team scoring twice in that first quarter. Handoff, flag down on the play as Jam started the run over left tackle and then broke it outside, a gain of five, but this one may be coming back. No, I think it's gonna be offsides on Scottsdale. I think the right defensive end was aligned in the neutral zone. Yep, you can see that line judge now pointing towards Scottsdale. Head referee here. Well, they should definitely take that penalty because that'll bring up a second Offsides. and five. Rather Defense, than number 96, five-yard penalty, replay second down. So now they got a second and five rather than it would have been about a third and a long four. So I think a good choice there by Coach Medic to take the penalty and bring up their second and five. He's in, looks like he's going to remain in their three or four wide receiver set. They've taken the tight end out of the game for the last couple series and they're spreading the formation. Second down and five. Central Lakes trying to take the lead for the second time. That is the fifth bad snap of the day and Faber has to roll out to the near side and close to the first down. If you go by the line judge on the far side, he's about a yard shy of the first down as he's rushed out of bounds at the 34 pickup of four yards on the play. Well, let's see if they change personnel here with the third and short. Um, looking for number 88, Gerards, who is the tight end to come in the game, but I do not see him entering the formation, so they're sticking with their four wide receiver set and single back on third and one. Vincent Mangania is the center, and they lose it again. The ball is loose as the scrum begins, and it's actually picked up by one of the artichokes. And that's Kyle Cotton, and he's returning it, and I don't hear a whistle. Well, I don't think there was a whistle, Jeff. That ball was just bouncing around at the bottom of that pile, getting knocked around. It shows up in Cotton's hand, and he picks it up and nearly breaks it for a touchdown. Great job of pursuing to bring him down on the play, but a huge turnover and opportunity for Scottsdale's offense. Second turnover of the day for the Central Three Lakes the Raiders. Scottsdale, number 79, must leave the game for one play. Well, another helmet has come off. Now, I thought he said 79, but 79 is coming back onto the field. He's an offensive lineman. And he, I didn't... He, call, he called the wrong team. It was 79 for, yeah. for Central Lakes that lost his helmet. That would have been offensive lineman. Curtis Brisk, of course, they turned the ball over, so it's irrelevant. Right. So 13.52 left to go here in the first half. Scottsdale will come out running the ball, and Chadwick picks up a solid eight yards on his first touch of the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. You know, Jeff, to go back to that last third and short play, they line up in four wide receivers, and, and Faber sneaks under center, and that's the first time today they tried to do a snap from underneath the center, and that happens a lot. These centers and quarterbacks are not used to that exchange anymore because everybody's in the shotgun, mm -hmm. and they get the fumbled snap. So they moved it back. It's a seven-yard pickup for Chadwick. Now Monahan is the feature back in this four receiver set. Brugman hit as he throws. This could be a fumble. And fortunately, and really I'm not sure why Alex Hoskins didn't jump on that ball. He was getting ready to. And then a heads up play there by Scottsdale as their center pounced on it and Austin Ross that was a heck of a play by Ross to hustle back and get on that football. My so, goodness. So that like was a fumble. It definitely was, yeah. That moves them back to the 50. Now it's third and 10, a loss of seven on the play. 
Scottsdale with a 14-13 lead with 12 and a half left to go here in the first half. Monahan counterplay, breaks to the outside, and now off to the races. He's got two men to beat. He's forced out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Move the chains for the artichokes, a fresh set of downs. Well, a great call there by Coach Ziegler on a third and 10 to come up with a running play between the tackles. Uh, Central Lakes was not ready for it, and Monahan broke that play and uh, showed excellent speed to get to the sideline side and bring up a first and on 10 Central at Lakes, the 12. Their first game. So they marked him out of bounds at the 12 yard line. It's a 38 yard run for Monahan. Monahan 5'10", 180 pounds out of New Jersey. Monahan came in here second leading rusher with 438 yards, averaging six and a half yards per touch. He also has 18 catches for 109 yards. So he's put together a very solid year for Doug Madoski and the Fighting Artichokes. We got a flag down on the play. I'll start. Offense number 65, five yard penalty, remains first down. You know, Jeff, one of the things we haven't talked about, these guys haven't played a game in about two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so the timing a little bit on both offenses has been a little bit off, not terrible, but a little bit off. And there's an example there. With the long motion that they used on that play, it throws off the, the snap count and the cadence a little bit. So first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Actually, it's the 17-yard line. Back to the air, and Brugman over the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown. That's a beautiful throw and ball there. Nuwabi. Yeah, Doobie Nuwabi beat the corner on the post route, and a great throw by Brugman, put it right on his numbers, right on great timing, and an excellent conversion by Scottsdale after that turnover. So Eric Lopez on the 17 yard pass play, that is the third touchdown pass of the day for Tyler Brugman. And that makes it 20 to 13 with 11.37 left to go here in the first half. The kick is up and the kick is good. That makes it 21 to 13 Scottsdale. You're watching the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. This is MC TV Sports. Maricopa Now takes you inside the classrooms where students put their passion into practice and gives you a front row seat to the talent taking center stage. Maricopa Now introduces you to the programs and people that make a difference in your community. Get up close and personal with the desert dwellers who support student research. Tune in and learn how to make a new favorite dish. Maricopa Now every day on Cox Cable Channel 115. Check out our website for times. Alongside Joe Kirsting, Jeff Lowry back here from Scottsdale's Decabooter Sports Complex in the 2015 Valley of the Sun Bowl. Well, we've had our third lead change in this contest. Points off of turnovers is what you've been telling me, and that's exactly what happened on both of those last couple of scores. And a loose ball on the kickoff, and fortunately for Central Lakes, Troy Lenz was able to corral it. And they'll have decent starting field position at the 32-yard line with 11.34 left to play. Right now, I'm getting the indication, and I guess if you're gonna be making the multitude of errors that we've seen Central Lakes do so far, I mean, they have had six bad snaps, one of which cost them a turnover. They've given up 14 points, as you said, uh, points off turnovers. You know, it's it's a matter of, you know, how long can you continue to make these mis these little mistakes? Well, it's putting the pressure on your offense to have to score every time you get the ball. And you're putting your defense in short short fields. You know, the first drive first drive was less than 20 yards. This last one was a 50-yard drive and Scottsdale's too talented to give them short fields all game long, and you're keeping your offense from getting points every time you turn it over. So Jam gets the call on first down and 10. He's going to be wrapped up by Kylan Cotton, who recovered the fumble on the last possession by the Raiders, in which Scottsdale marched downfield, capped off by a 17-yard pass play, Brugman to Nuwabi. 
To the air on second down and eight, and the pass is going to be complete to Johnson near the 42-yard line, and then he stutter steps and gets by Cotton and dives for the first down for the Raiders. Yeah, really nice job by, by Johnson there to uh, get inside the defender and take that ball away and then pick up the first down. But, boy, I love the way he catches the ball in his hands, Jeff. He's really got excellent fundamentals. So they're featuring Carlton Jam in the backfield. And they will give the Jam as he's running left, cuts it back up, and he dives to the 50-yard line where he is wrapped up by Brian Keyes, the middle linebacker, after a gain of close to seven. Well, that was 20 personnel, and, it, and they're remaining in 20 personnel, which is two backs and no tight ends in the game. So they're using the three wide receiver set with two backs, and this is a a rather unusual formation for them, but it's a way to get both of their outstanding tailbacks in the game at the same time. Brings up second down and three. Line to gain is the 46. Scottsdale with a 21-13 lead. They go back to the ground attack. Jam across the 45. And again, and again, it was Brian Keyes on the tackle for Scottsdale, and he is already approaching double figures in tackles here in the first half. Well, I really like the way that Jam and uh, uh, Blanchard, both the running back from Central Lakes, they, they don't fool around. I mean, they, they don't make a whole lot of moves. They de decisive in their cuts, and they get their pads down, and they run through tacklers, and Keyes, is going to have to make a lot of tackles this afternoon. Well, there's a penalty marker. Is this uh, too much time? No, it's going to be a full start. Left tackle, 71. Full start. Early. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty. What a, first down. what a beautiful day here today. I mean, the view that we have from the press box, you can see the Superstition Mountains in the background, four peaks off to the left, to the east of the stadium. Absolutely gorgeous day, not a cloud in the sky. Temperature in the low 70s. Feels pretty warm for these uh, Minnesotans. And yeah, we'll end up getting more snowbirds because of uh, this beautiful day today. To the air, set up that screen on the outside and having nothing to do with that was Curtis Taylor, the 6'1", 205 pounder out of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, he read that very well. They, they faked to the left running back, and they swung the right running back, who was uh, number 24, Jam, and uh, he was all over that play. Second down and 15 back at the 48-yard line. Faber. Flushed out of the pocket, close to the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball, and he finds Johnson all the way down to the 33-yard line. That's a 15-yard pass play, and looks to be enough for the first down as they move the chains. Yeah, great job there by Faber. It was only a three-man rush, but he was getting a little bit of pressure. He scrambled to his left, and uh, Johnson, the receiver, did a great job uncovering from the corner, and. Uh, Again, a beautifully thrown ball and a great catch for the first down. So it's first down and 10 from the 33. 8.30 on the clock, second quarter action. Scottsdale on defense in the all-white. Green trim, they lead 21-13. They will go to the inside handoff. Good pressure by Scottsdale. Getting in there first was Angel Silva, and he's the one that really disrupted that play as Clayton will eventually be awarded the tackle for the Fighting Artichokes. Yeah, Silva was coming on a rundown blitz. He broke through there cleanly and was able to hit the back just as he was approaching the line of scrimmage, and they were only pick, able to pick up a single yard on that play. Now that last play, Scottsdale went to press man coverage on Kyron Johnson with no deep safety help to that side. I can't see them doing that a whole lot today with that young man's talent. Let's see if they go to Rao. They haven't went to him yet. Instead, they throw over the middle, and Johnson uncharacteristically dropped the ball. He leads the nation in receiving touchdowns this year. He has one more to add on to the 
tally. He has 23, which leads the National Junior College Athletic Association. Well, that was one of the poor throws by Faber was definitely behind Johnson. I was watching Johnson all the way on that play. He was wide open, Jeff. Yeah. And if he'd have thrown that ball uh, in front of him just a little bit, he might have broken that to the end zone. So it brings up third down and nine. Central Lakes led at one point after Scottsdale. Well, they've led actually a couple of times, six to nothing, and then led again 13 to seven. And there is a timeout on the field with Scottsdale leading at 21 to 13. And today's game is being brought to you by Maricopa Colleges, where your education and success comes first. By Scottsdale Community College, learn, grow, achieve. By Cox Communications, your friend in the digital age. And by MCTV, Maricopa College's television, we're plugged in to what's happening at your Maricopa Colleges. With Ashley Neville, the Hall of Famer Joe Kirsten, who's been in this game 15 times. My goodness, do you miss it, Coach? Oh, I miss it all the time, but uh, the second best thing is to be with you guys right well, here well, at CTV and doing these games from the press box. That's a lot of fun as well. Well, Joe and I had a chance last weekend to call a couple of high school games. Uh, the high school season wrapped up, and boy, congratulations to Dick Taylor's Centennial Coyotes. Uh, First, game. first season in Division One and win the state title. That's that's an incredible job by, by Centennial. First, first time game. in about 22 years, a West Side big school wins the state championship. You have to go all the way back to the early 80s, Moon Valley. So third and nine. Here's the pass complete to the near side, and Arlington didn't get much on that play. I'll tell you who's having a nice game here defensively for Scottsdale is Kylan Cotton, number 25. Yeah, Cotton's shown me quite a bit out of that free safety position. He's a smallish free safety, but he covers a lot of ground and makes a lot of plays. And this is kind of an unusual call there on, four, on third and 10 to just throw the hitch route, but they pick up five. It brings up fourth and five. Obviously the coach in his mind was thinking four down territory. They don't have much of a uh, kicker, uh, he's not really capable of making a one from this distance, so he's going to go for it here at the plus 28. He's got his leading rusher back there flanking to his right and Carlton Jam. Fourth down and five. Delay a game. Offense number 10, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Well, Coach Madosky of Scottsdale will take that one. He is assisted by Tommy Ziegler, the offensive coordinator. Coach Chick, Freeman, Kay, Nayeka Long, and Musa. Got a lot of uh, coaches on this team. The Brandon Moore is the co-defensive coordinator. Of course, Tony Neighbors has been here forever. He is the uh, head athletic trainer. Fourth and 10, Faber. Scrambling wide open. How could Johnson be wide open to that effect? 33 yards, and it's a one. It is now 21 19. Scottsdale's lead trimmed down to two. Well, Scottsdale came with a three man rush on that fourth and 10. They dropped eight into coverage. Uh, they left open this right deep third of the field. And I don't know where the cornerback went, but if you're going to go anywhere, go with six. Because six catches a lot of these touchdowns. And he, he couldn't have been more wide open. And uh, Central Lakes is going to go ahead and line up to kick the extra point, though they're down by two points. At some point, they may go for two. They got Zinn kicking, and that one somehow got through out of the hold of Riley Atkinson and the long snapper. Matt Soldner. So it's now 21 to 20. Scottsdale still on top. It's a one point affair with 6.38 left to go. This is the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. 
35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Scottsdale awaiting the kick, and let's send it downstairs to Ashley Neville. Hey guys, yeah, the, the Raiders obviously, they're not used to this weather. It's beautiful for them out here. They were practicing in snow last week. And another thing is that these guys had to raise money to come out here. They did a lot of fundraising. They had a lot of different people sponsoring them to come out here, different donors. So I know that they appreciate to be here in the Valley of the Sun Bowl. Thanks, Ashley. Monahan with a nice return of 27 yards up to the 32 yard line. And Scottsdale will have decent starting field position. Uh, Coach, you said it during the break and, uh, you know, hadn't added it all up yet, but you said that every score of this game has been all touchdown passes. Yeah, six touchdown passes, three for each team. One missed extra point is the difference in the game. And uh, the way both of these teams are playing offensively, uh, very, very little of uh, defense is being played so far this afternoon. So six minutes and 28 seconds left to go here in the first half. 21-20 Scottsdale and now Brugman out of Brophy College Prep handing off and this is going to get Scottsdale a first down, a pickup of 11 yards on the play. And this, this outstanding run attack has been impressive enough to really uh, Open this game up offensively for Scottsdale, and that was Weiwei, who had over 1,000 yards rushing and averaging nearly eight yards a carry. He picks up 11 to the 45-yard line, and it's now first down and 10, and Weiwei again across the midfield stripe to the 45. That's 10 more yards and another first down. Same play, same result, Jeff. Great job by the offensive line, just really blowing Central Lakes off the ball. And no huddle, it's a hurry up offense. Weiwei on the counter, running left, gets the edge and dives to the 40, but the ball comes loose. And, and it's gonna be Central Lakes ball. And it was recovered on the far side by Dorber Cooper. Well, Weiwei was, had plenty of room around that left edge and he got hit. I couldn't tell the number of the defender from Central Lakes. Uh, with it being on that far sideline, but the tackle stripped him of the ball and great job by Cooper getting on that ball. And that's a huge turnover for the Artichokes. So it comes with five minutes and 47 seconds left to go here in the first half. You're watching the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl, which started all the way back in 1981 when Ricks College defeated Western over at uh, Phoenix College in downtown Phoenix by a final score of 28-21. Handoff running straight ahead up across the 45 to the 46-yard line. It looked like the stop was made there by Brant Davidson, the sophomore 270-pounder out of Tucson, South Point Catholic. Well, the Central Lakes team is so difficult because they're, they're very effective at running the ball right at you. So as defensive linemen, you got to play run first. And so when they do go to the air, they've been getting very little pass rush, be it Scottsdale, on favor of the great quarterback. And that's how they've been getting the big plays down the field. It was a gain of five. It brings up second down and five. They're going to go bubble screen to the far side and not much going on there. And a good job of stringing that play out was Tamarack Holmes for Scottsdale. Yeah, Holmes came out of his safety position and broke well on the play and made the tackle. And looks like we're gonna have a late penalty here. It's gotta be a personal foul. And the corner and the wide receiver are getting to know each other down here at the bottom. So I have a feeling it's on one or the other. Well, after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 94, 15-yard yep. penalty, automatic first down. That's, That's number 94's first unsportsmanlike penalty of the game. Well, that's uh, Manasi Komoda, the 327-pounder out of John F. Kennedy High School in Seattle, Washington. So he'll be sitting out a play or two. Well, and I didn't see that coming at all because all I saw was number eight, Way, and number six, Johnson here right in front of the official, so I made an assumption that it was on one of them. So we've had three lead changes in this game, and right now Central Lakes with some momentum offensively. And the handoff goes over the left side. Fine, fine defensive play by Craig Kanyan Guerrara, the 6'1", 228-pounder out of Maryland.
Gain of two on the play brings up second down. And Central Lakes is going at a little slower pace right now, Jeff, with four minutes left to go on the clock. They'd like to run some clock here before trying to score here before the first half, end of the first half. So Jake, Jake Faber to the air, dump it off to the far side, Blanchard with open running room, has the first inside the 10, and finally forced out of bounds on the far side, another tackle for Cotton, but not before a big gainer on a quick uh, middle screen or bubble screen that time by Central Lakes. Yeah, that's a beautifully executed screen to the tailback. The offensive line got in front of the re receiver very quickly, and Blanchard did a great job following in his blocks and got it down to the six-yard line, and a great chance here for Central Lakes to take the lead. 29-yard pass play from Jake Faber who threw for 2,775 yards and completed 67% of his passes. And he gives the jam around the right edge. He broke the tackle, Kylan Cotton had him. But he slipped that tackle and then raced in. Boy, I tell you, I mean, he's got that second gear and he hit that, that extra gear and raced in from five yards out. And they have regained the lead, the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders have two outstanding tailbacks. We've been talking about them all afternoon, and that was Jam that time on the off tackle play. Saw that the, there was a seam to the outside. He bounced it outside and was able to outrun the defense to the corner of the end zone. Atkinson the holder, and just the quick pooch kick there by Seth Zins, who missed 18 extra point attempts this year, but he gets this one. And now Central Lakes has regained the lead 27-21 with 3.21 left to go here in the first half. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. And I won't have to tell my kids this isn't a drill. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always lock it up. All right, 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. High end over end kick, and right now no one on Scottsdale can find it. But it's picked up by Monahan near the 10 yard line, and he didn't get very far. What good coverage there. Well, Scottsdale puts three guys deep on their return, and usually in that uh, alignment, the middle man who was Monahan should take charge and make the call. And evidently, nobody made a call on that play, and the ball hits the ground and that allowed the coverage for Central Lakes to hit him deep inside the 15 yard line. Terrible field position with 314 to go here for the Artichokes. It's been a back and forth first half and a very high scoring game. Uh, we were kind of kidding around between, you know, during the commercial break as Scottsdale will start first down and 10. Will this game see 100 points? That has never happened in a Valley of the Sun Bowl. Now Brugman in the pocket, throws to Curitan, who goes up and makes the two-handed grab near the 27-yard line. A gain of 12 yards, 13 yards on the play and a first down for Scottsdale. Well, that was a little late on the timing on that out route, and it looked like to me that the defender might get there in time to knock that ball away, but Curitan was able to snatch it out of the air just before the corner was was there in coverage. And I'll tell you, I've noticed one thing about Curitan. He's got strong hands, good hands. Over the middle, intercepted. No, it's in and out of the hands of the safety back near the Scottsdale 47-yard line. And that would have been the second turnover of the day for Scottsdale. Caleb Glennon, young man out of Amherst, Wisconsin, almost came up with the pick. And that was a very poor decision by Brugman. Uh, Caleb Glennon was sitting right there in the middle of the field, ready to pick that ball off, and a poor, poor decision there. So now it's second down and 10. They go to the ground attack, and nothing that time. As Jalen Penn, the 204-pounder out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, in his freshman year. That puts a smile on your D coordinator's face when you make a play like that. Tripped him up after a one-yard pickup. And now it is third down and nine for Scottsdale. 
2.15 left to go, so plenty of time for Central Lakes to get the ball back, and they've been unstoppable on offense here of late. But Monahan around the right edge, coming in on that sweep, and he picks up the first down as he races to the 40, a 13-yard pickup. You know, Jeff, you said a key thing right there. So even if Scottsdale doesn't score on this drive, getting that first down was huge because you give the ball back to Central Lakes with two minutes to go in a, in a half, that's plenty of time for those guys to score. So now the clock reads 152 and counting, first down and 10 up to the 41-yard line. It was a 13-yard pickup on the last play, and they keep it on the ground. No big hurry right now as Monahan will dive to the 46-yard line, a gain of five. 133 on the clock, and now second down and five. Let's see if Brugman goes to the air here. No, instead, he, well, he does. He fakes that inside handoff and then promptly throws it into the turf, incomplete. Is there a flag down on the play? I don't I don't believe so. Okay. Um, he was running, that, that's your zone read option there. He faked the ball to the back, and what? Oh, maybe there is a flag. I can't tell. The referee from the far sideline, the headlines when he's talking to the referee. There's no foul for intentional grounding. Number seven was in the area. Okay. Yeah, I didn't Third see down. a flag on the field, but uh, they were discussing whether there was a receiver in the area, which there was. So that's gonna be third and five. All right, Brugman out of Brophy College Prep here in Phoenix. And the handoff goes, Chadwick, the big bruising back, six foot, 220 pounds of pure muscle. And he's got 11 yards and a first down with 116. Now the clock stops with the moving of the chains at the junior college level. Well, they also, Scottsdale time just used Scott their time. Out. Their time out of the half. All right, so 116 left to go. Scottsdale looking good on the drive, eating up some clock, but they trail by six in the 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl from Scottsdale Community College. And coach, uh, I tell you, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. I mean, if you're not gonna get bored uh, with 48 points up there on the board. Yeah, a lot of points, not a lot of defense so far. So it's one of those games that uh, Probably special teams or a defensive turnover or turnover by one of the defensive sides is going to make the difference in this game. And early on, you know, if, if Central Lakes has not committed the turnovers they have, they probably have a bigger lead right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, Scottsdale has forced some turnovers and uh, taken advantage of those turnovers. Now they, let's see if they can take advantage of some field position here. Even getting a, a field goal at the end of the half would be huge. The thing you don't want to do is give that ball back to Central Lakes with a, any time left on the clock. And what a job Greg Medic has done for Central Lakes. Uh, his team has finished in the top 20 nationally every year, all nine years. He's been in five bowl games in the last seven. And traditionally, a very strong defense. Of course, there's a lot of elements, you know, traveling 2,000 miles and playing in, in the heat as opposed to the cold of Minnesota. Monahan, left side, upended on a tremendous defensive play by Cooper along the far side. And we got a flag down here from the, from the linesman on this sideline, and I'm not sure the Scottsdale O-line is clapping their hands, so I guess it's offsides, and it is. Offsides on Central Lakes. Eric Lopez, the field goal kicker for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, has struggled. Of course, you know, you, you don't know why he missed five or missed six out of 11 this year. His longest is 42. So it would mean that they need to get somewhere around the 22 to get into his his area of expertise, his, his range. Now they set up a, a little screen to Monahan, that middle screen, and he would have got a lot more yardage. There is a flag down on the play, but Glennon made a tremendous open field tackle near the 34 yard line. But let's sort things out here as the officials with 53 seconds left to go here in the first half of this 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. And that flag was thrown by the umpire, and that usually means it's going to be on an offensive lineman. 
You can see the back 22 Monahan slipping out to the left. He's got a convoy of blockers up in front of him. And it looks like he just tripped on his own two feet there and had a chance for bigger yardage. And he's the shaken up player on this play. He's got his helmet off. He is coming off under his own power, which is good. But uh, of course, uh, Scottsdale is, is short a player. Juice Davis was their third Holy leading rusher. Offense number 65, mm. 10 yard penalty, still first down. You know, Jeff, there will not a 10 second runoff foul cause the clock to stop. You know, Jeff, I did not see the hold on number 65, but many times on a screen pass, they teach offensive linemen to ha try to push the defensive lineman past them when they run that screen pass, and he might have grabbed the, one of the defenders as he was attempting to do that. That would be the center of the offensive line. And now they just run a safe little run to the right side, 40 seconds on the clock to Wayway. Timeout, Scottsdale, their second timeout. All right, so Scottsdale wants to talk things over. We'll take a timeout here as Armand Wayway and Scottsdale trail it by six in this 35th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. As a parent, I think it's tragic that one in five children struggles with hunger right here in America. But there is hope. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're feeding America. Back here at Scottsdale Community College, a 27 to 21 lead for visiting Central Lakes Raiders. Eight and two by way of record coming in out of Brainerd, Minnesota. Scottsdale, the host team, six and four coming in. Scottsdale looking at a second down and 14 from the 48 yard line. And now Tyler Brugman throwing, complete to Curitan at the 36 and he's inside the Raider 30 yard line down to the 27. A 21 yard pickup and a nice pass. Good protection for Brugman. As they go to the hurry up offense, they've marked the ball at the 28, and he puts it into the turf with 27 seconds, bringing up second and 10. Yeah, nice job there by Brugman getting up on the ball. I think they've got one timeout remaining, and they don't want to waste it just yet. They don't like to use it if they got to set up for a field goal or for a last shot at the end zone. Could very well be four down territory, but they're about six or seven yards from field goal range. Set up the middle screen, near side, Monahan out of bounds. That'll stop the clock as he races out of bounds near the 21 yard line. It's gonna bring up a third and two. Smart job there by Monahan getting out of bounds. He had an opportunity to possibly cut that back to the middle, but he smartly took it up the sideline, stepped out of bounds to stop the clock with a third and three from the uh, 21 yard line. 20 seconds on the clock. Brugman, eyes over the defense, four receiver set. Monahan the single set back, he looks right, goes to the hot read, caught Curitan out of bounds near the 10. Well, Jeff, structurally, I'm not real high on what I'm seeing Central Lakes doing right there. They're not jamming a slot receiver, and Blake's there ran right clear through the seam with nobody jamming him running down the field and that forced the corner to have to play deep off Curitan to complete that hitch route. 15 seconds as the clock stops, 27-21, team in red on top, Central Lakes. Brugman forced out of the pocket, now throws it into the end zone for the second time this afternoon. It's caught by Tyre Blakes. There is a flag down behind the line of scrimmage. I think we got a lineman downfield, an eligible receiver. The umpire was looking at one of the linemen as he threw that flag, and I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to get. We were talking to the voice of the Artichokes, Eric Anderson, before the game, and and you know this Tyre Blake's uh, interesting, uh, interesting player. I mean, you know, he's got the size. He's out of Mountain Point, won a state title over there. So we Personal get the call. Foul. Defense, mm. hands to the face, number 57, 15 yard penalty, replay the first down. Boy, that hurts. Yeah, the referee called it on the said defense, but he meant on the Artichokes offense, obviously. Right. And that's a huge, huge break for Central Lakes. There's eight seconds left to go. It's first and goal at the 25. 
And uh, looking into the sun too. Yes, they are. And we'll see what happens on this last, maybe last play of the half. All right, again, eight seconds on the clock. Brugman looking left, looking left. Down to five seconds and throws it to the near side and Rhodes intercepts it near the 15. And that may have been a pick six saving tackle by Kevin Monahan. With no time on the clock, it is halftime. And what a first half, 27-21 in favor of the visiting team out of Minnesota, Central Lakes Raiders. Well, the mistakes here in the first half have cost each team. You know, the main play on the end of the half here, uh, 57 for the Artichokes getting the personal foul penalty. Wayne Sellers keeps them out of the end zone and keeps them from getting the lead right here before the end of the half. Well, we saw a lot of passing in that first half in terms of most of the scoring was uh, scored through the air. And, uh, you know, you talk about uh, the balance that both these teams have. Obviously, Scottsdale's offense doesn't have those big lofty numbers at Central Lakes, but they play from two different conferences. But the first six scores in this game were all through the air. Yeah, and Brugman seems like he's got his feet underneath him pretty well until that last pass right there. That was a poor decision on his part, but he's, but he's in a scramble mode with the last play of the half trying to make something happen. But uh, overall, he's played well, and obviously Faber is outstanding for Central Lakes. Well, Ashley Neville has the head coach of the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, Doug Madoski, sideline. Hey, Coach, um, you know, in the first half, you guys struggled there a little bit. It's been a really competitive game. You're down by six. You had a chance to score there through an interception. What are you going to tell your players at halftime? I just think we need to come out and start playing. I mean, at this point, we're playing really flat. Defensively, we're, we're, we look terrible. You know, offensively, we're, we're getting some plays, but then we're shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties and, and untimely penalties on both sides of the ball. We just need to come out and settle back in and go play. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Back to you. All right, Ashley, thank you very much. So it's halftime here in Scottsdale. The Fighting Artichokes trailing Central Lakes, the Raiders 27-21. We'll have the second half coming up next on MCTV Sports. 